Hey everyone, Court here, and welcome to Cube Tales, the YouTube channel where you can find classic fairy tales with a Minecraft twist. Today's story is part four, From Hoodie and the Cave Enderman, by Tom Garzan and Kate Bush. This is a part of the Minecraft fairy tale series. The trap is getting ready to be set and the duo is closing in. So let's check in and see what's happening with Hoodie, Zack, and the villagers of Snicklefart. Part 4. The Mouse Trap. The night they were waiting for came a few days later. At exactly 11.30 p.m., Zack saw the tall figure sneaking into the village. He set the sleepy Mrs. McNugget on the path with a few pecks of coffee to wake her up. Once Hoodie saw the red chicken coming down the path, he grabbed his bow and arrows and headed towards his former home. It took him about 30 minutes to get there. It was in the darkest part of the forest, but with his glowing purple eyes, he was able to make out everything easily. He crept up on the cave quietly and slowly, checking to make sure that no one was left behind. Once he had made sure the cave was empty, he snuck over all the sleeping blankets to the very back of the cave. There, in a small crevice in the rock, was the triple S string. Hoodie made sure he had brought a backpack to hold it all. Stuffing as much as he could grab into his pack, he quickly exited the cave and made his way back to his cabin. He knew that the average thieving mission took about two hours, and he did not want to be there when they got back with their stolen goodies. Once he got to his cabin, he was startled to find Zack sitting there on the steps waiting for him. Did you get it? Zack asked, his eyes almost glowing with excitement. Sure did. Great, I'm wide awake. Now let's start weaving the net. The duo spent all night weaving a huge net that was as big as the main room in Hoodie's cabin. It took a special skill to weave the net and make sure it did not stick together as you did it. Hoodie showed Zack how to use frog slime to make the string easy to weave together and to make it safe for himself to work on, as the string only stuck to Enderman, but the frog slime made it so he could touch it. It was gross, but sometimes you have to do gross things in the name of good. Zack headed home as the sun was rising, confident in the plan they had worked out while weaving all night. He knew it would work, and then all the villagers would have to accept that he was important and that there were good Endermen out there. This was the plan. A week from now, they would wait for all the villagers to go to sleep. Zack would then sneak into their homes and steal all their valuables, even the ones he did not think were worth anything. He would then pile them up in the town square, tempting the Endermen to come and get them all. Hoodie assured him that they would not be able to resist. Hoodie, meanwhile, would rig up the net in some trees well above the pile of goods. 
He made it so far up that it would drop quickly, but still could not be seen by the tall creatures. He made sure Zack knew it had to be tall because the Endermen were tall. Then he ran the long triple S string around the square. It went from the wooden sign on the inn to the bucket on the baker's roof filled with flour, which then fell onto a shovel, and then the handle on that hit the latch that opened the door to the mayor's chicken coop, releasing the chickens. Once they were loose, they would peck on a rope made of corn. The rope would then release the net, trapping the cave endermen in its super slippery silky string, which only clung to enderman bodies. Since Hoodie had the best archery skills in the overworld, he was the right choice to shoot the arrow that would hit the sign that would start the chain reaction. It was important that he not be seen, because the townspeople would probably think that he was one of the cave endermen and capture him too. Zack did not want that to happen, so he made Hoodie wait at the top of the tower until he gave the all clear. Hoodie took up his position at the top of the tower and waited for the signal from Zack. A hoot sounded like an owl. Waiting tensely, Hoodie checked his bowstring and made sure he picked up the straightest arrow in his quiver. He was ready to take down the annoying thieves, finally. It was not long before Zack spotted the cave dwellers slipping past the edge of the forest and into the town. They moved fast, their tall, dark legs carrying them twice the distance a normal human could walk. It seemed that they had taken the bait as they went straight for the town square. Zack watched anxiously, waiting for them all to be positioned just right before giving the signal. The Endermen looked over the loot greedily. Von Steelson gave the order, and they all started loading up their long arms with as much as they could carry. It was time. Zack gave the signal. Ooh, ooh. Hoodie raised his bow and let his arrow fly. Clang went the ensign. Plunk went the baker's bucket. Clink went the shovel handle, and snick went the latch on the chicken coop. Pluck, pluck, pluck went the chickens as they pecked at the corn. Within moments, the net fell onto the group of Endermen, trapping them right where they were. The plan had worked. Arg! What is this? Let us go! demanded Von Steelson. Nevertheless, they were well and truly trapped. The ruckus had awoken the village, and people started tumbling out of their doors all in their nightclothes with wild hair to see what the noise was. They all stood frozen and quiet, looking at the net that had captured all the Endermen and showed all of their belongings underneath. Surprisingly, the first thing they did was complain about their things being taken. I say, what is my jewelry box doing in there? demanded Mrs. Limpet. Yes, and why are my chickens running around? barked the mayor. Zack realized the situation was getting out of control. Listen, everyone, he shouted and finally succeeded in getting them to notice him. We took your things to lure the Endermen here. Rest assured, they would be given back. We needed them as bait, and it obviously worked. Oh, well, I see, young man. What's your name again? The mayor asked, straightening his robe. Zack, sir. However, it was not just me. Hoodie, you can come out now. Hoodie walked slowly into the town square and stood next to Zack. No! screamed Mrs. Wiggleworth. One wasn't caught! Get it! Get it before it steals all our things! Zack immediately stood in front of Hoodie, shovel raised and ready to protect his friend. No, you are wrong. This is Hoodie. He is good and he is the one who helped me capture the cave enderman. You should be thanking him. All the men who had moved forward stopped at those words. Thanking him? said Mayor Gimpy. Yes, sir, I met him some months ago in the woods after these cave endermen had thrown him out for not wanting to steal anymore. He and I became friends, and it was he who told me the secret to trapping the endermen. You owe him an apology, Mrs. Wiggleworth. Mrs. Wiggleworth looked down and blushed in shame. I am so sorry. I was just afraid. I am sure you're right, young man. Then turning to Hoodie, she offered her hand. Will you shake hands with me, creature? Uh... Hoodie, was it? Hoodie walked forward and did more than shake hands. He enveloped the old woman in a large hug and everyone cheered and rushed forward to join in. Hooray for Hoodie and Zack, the townspeople cheered. Everyone had to decide then what to do with the cave endermen. They were caught, but they could not just stay in the square all the time, especially not with everyone's belongings in there with them. Zack had a plan for that, though. 
He explained to them all how there was an Enderman prison that Hoodie had told him about. He decided that he and Hoodie should call on a local hunter from a nearby village who was known to escort Endermen to the prison and pay anyone who captured them a finder's fee. This meant that the town would be rid of their Enderman problem and make money as well. They all agreed that this was a genius plan and the next morning Zack and Hoodie went off to seek this hunter. After several hours of walking, they came to a small village and asked directions to the hunter's house. It was a small, beat-up cabin that they found after following the directions. When they knocked, an old, weather-looking man answered the door. "'What do you want?' he asked in a voice that sounded like he had eaten sandpaper. "'Is this the one you've captured?' he asked, pointing at Hoodie. "'No, this is a good Enderman. We've got some other Endermen for you to escort to the prison, though,' said Zack. The old man looked Hoodie up and down carefully. After a moment of staring, he shrugged his shoulders and said, Fine by me. Where would I find these Endermen? They're in a net in our town square, the town of Snicklefart, several hours walk from here. In a net? How'd you manage that? The man was staring at them in amazement. You mean you've caught more than one of them? Zack and Hoodie shared a look and smiled. Yes, we did. It's a long story. We can tell it to you as we walk. Lead on, my good Enderman. The man grabbed his coat, locked his door, and followed the two friends down the path to Snicklefart. Well, that's it guys. Part four is done and only one part is left. What will happen next to Hoodie and Zack? Leave your ideas in the comments and tune into Cube Tales next Friday to find out. As always, please subscribe to our channel. The more you like it, the more people see it and the more videos we can make. Also, don't forget, you can buy the book Hoodie and the Cave Enderman by Tom Garzan and Kate Bush and read along with us. It is available on Amazon.com for $3.99 in print and $1.99 for Kindle, along with the other books in the series worldwide. I'll put the link in the description box. A big thanks to my own kids, Zachary and Brayden, for lending their voices to make Hoodie and Zach come alive. Finally, a big thank you to Mac Jeffrey for his talented video skills. Thanks, guys. See you next week for the finale.